Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Wednesday morning's Facebook Live with Messy Church. Um, my name's Jane Butler. Oh, look, there it says on the screen, I'm the Messy Church Training and Development Lead, and I'm here this morning to chat to you about Messy Church Goes Wild. Um, we'll just give it a few minutes for people to uh, gather if they're still making a cup of tea or coffee. Um, so if you're joining us, pop in the chat where you're joining us from this morning. Um, I'm in Nottingham and the sun is shining here this morning. I think that's the, probably the case for most people in the UK today. Um, but I know that I think there's some, some rain forecast um, in parts of Scotland and Ireland. So apologies if the sun is not out where you are, but uh, do let us know what the weather's doing. I'm just, oh, good morning, Martin. Always good to have you with us. Um, apologies if I look this way. I've got the chat open so that I can see who's with us um so I'm not ignoring you I'm just trying to read <laughs> who's with us so do say where you are in the world and what the weather is like and um we'll make a start shortly um and we'll open together in prayer I've got some um, I've got a gathering prayer that's um appears in our messy adventures material for messy church goes wild um we'll chat a bit more in detail about that a little further on it's an active prayer that you might want to try in your own messy churches um good morning kate she's in the sunshine from the oval methodist church lovely to have you with us this morning um as well um so it uses this prayer uses some british sign language um so the the signs are british sign language i'm conscious that we quite often um, have international visitors so you'll probably want to look up um, the right signs uh, in your language um, where, wherever you're joining us from. So I think we'll make a start there's a few people watching uh, and it's a couple of minutes past nine so um, the signs are going to be oh Jocelyn's with us from New Zealand, Kia ora Jocelyn. Um, so yes you will need to translate into your own sign language but the signs we're going to be using it's a, a line and a response so the signs we're going to be using our faith, which is touch your forehead and bring your hand down. I certainly know in American they sign F and put that on top of one another for, for faith, hope uh, and love. Give yourself a, a hug or cross your hands across your heart. So they're the responses that we're going to use in this prayer. So let's pray together. I was debating doing this outdoors um, this morning, but um, I couldn't guarantee that my retired neighbours wouldn't start mowing the lawn. So I am inside, but this is obviously written in mind of you, you being outside. So let's pray together. We've come together on this patch of earth in faith and hope and love. We've come together under this sky in faith and hope and love. We've come together with the creatures we can see and those we can't, in faith and hope and love. We've come together with the people we can see and those we can't, in faith and hope and love. Creator God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we've come together in your name, in faith and hope and love. Amen. So I'm hoping you're joining us because um, you're excited about Messy Church Goes Wild, because that's what I'm talking to you about this morning. Um, just going to say hello to a couple of other people that have joined us while we were um, sharing prayer together. So Ike is with us, uh, Linda um, is with us uh, in Kintore in the northeast of Scotland, and Jean, lovely Jean, all the way from South Africa as well. Brilliant to have you all with us. Um, so I'm here this morning to chat to you about what Messy Church Goes Wild is all about. I could tell you lots about it, and um, I, I will do, but um, if you're like me, um, part of the reasons that Messy Church appeals as a format to you is because you're uh, a visual and kinesthetic learner and, and uh, pictures can paint a thousand words. So what better way is there to tell you about Messy Church Goes Wild than to show you a video. This is our new Messy Church Goes Wild video, uh, which we'd love to share with you now. Mm -hmm. 
Messy Church Goes Wild is the movement within Messy Church which aims to encourage Messy Churches to meet God outdoors, love the natural world, experience a sense of awe and wonder, and to be more eco-aware in all we do, both inside and out, as gathered and dispersed church for the good of the planet. Messy Church Goes Wild has made me think about how I can use my knowledge and my tools learnt here for creation and protecting the environment whilst also bringing others closer to God as well. So use it as an outreach as well, I think. Messy Church Goes Wild connects to all the five core principles behind Messy Church. It's an expression of creativity to reimagine and adapt the Messy Church shape to an outdoor context using the natural materials we find around us. My favourite bit about Messy Church Goes Wild today was doing the activity with the sand and the footprints and making pictures out of natural resources. Exploring and understanding the natural world is one way to celebrate God's creation, plus it hugely benefits our own well-being. I feel a real connection with God when I'm outside in nature, so I, I feel much more drawn to God when we're doing, doing this kind of thing. As Christians, we believe that this fullness of life is found ultimately in Jesus Christ. Messy Church Goes Wild aims to host spaces where Jesus Christ can be counted outdoors in the cathedral of the natural world. I think Messy Church Goes Wild has made me think about how great God's creation is. Messy Church Goes Wild expands our concept of hospitality as it prompts us to transform our behaviour as human beings and make room for other species on the planet. Young people can and do lead the way for whole households to change their behaviour to a more sustainable lifestyle. That's why our Messy Church Goes Wild resources have been devised and tested by teams, including Messy Church leaders, consultant scientists, children and young people for an all-age audience. The groups from two years old up until retirement age, everyone gets involved uh, and it's been really great that we've been able to do that. So Missy Church Goes Wild takes place whatever the weather. Um, we've done five pilot sessions so far. Each time the weather has been completely different. We've had lovely beautiful sunshine and we've had exceptionally windy like it has been for today's session and so far um, people have engaged with the sessions and we've had a good amount of people so whatever the weather take messy church goes wild outside get ready for a wild adventure Isn't that a great video? Um, huge thanks to um, Adrian and Ben on our media team um, who put that together for us, as well as the team down in Horn Church and uh, all the people that go along to their messy church for being willing uh, to help us out with putting that together. So quite apart from what it is, I thought we'd start with, well, why? Why are we doing Messy Church Goes Wild? And really the thinking um, behind it goes way back, um, back to 2017, 2018 time, when the original and best Messy Jane, Jane Ledbetter, who's with us from a sunny Liverpool this morning as well, lovely to have you with us, Jane, um, was really feeling compelled to do something about um, plastic waste and pollution. Um, and also Lucy um, sensed that this might be a way for us to reach another edge. Could this be an opportunity for us to reach a new group of people that want to meet God through the natural world. Um, a lot of it obviously is um, in response to this um, season of reimagining how and where we are church. Um, the pandemic for many of us has meant over the last couple of years, it's been much safer for us to be outdoors. Um, initiatives like the Church of England's Everyday Faith, which is about where and how we encounter God as we go about our lives, links our discipleship to the world outside of our church buildings. There's the rewilding movement, um, rewilding of the church movement in fresh expressions, which is about how we achieve growth and regeneration in our churches. And there's a strong desire amongst young people to see 
um, ecological change. Um, there was a youthscape report uh, done with Tear Fund called Burning Down the House a few years ago that stresses the concerns of young people in church regarding the environment with only one in 10 of them thinking that the church is doing enough to respond. Um, Messy Church, we're, you know, we're obviously, we're, we're intentional about being all age and we want to give young voices a chance to be heard, um, but not just heard, but to lead and influence adults as well. So is this just about us jumping on an ecological bandwagon um, and we, we believe not, because as the video um, said, we link all of this very strongly to our core messy church values. So as we said, inquiring minds are creative minds. Uh, we very much focused on the science um, of the natural world and of the, uh, the environmental situation we find ourselves in. So inquiring about how things uh, happen, how things are formed and the situation we're in leads us to think of creative responses to the situation we find ourselves in. Uh, we're all about, this is all about celebrating the environment. We're looking to create space for people to experience awe and wonder in the created and natural world. It talked about this new concept of hospitality for us, which is hospitality, not just for us as people, but all of God's creatures on the earth. Um, and about being inter intergenerational and bringing all the generations together, we believe this is a, a vehicle for doing that. If you talk about environmental um, situations in the secular world, there's two names that probably come to the forefront of your mind. So David Attenborough and Greta Thunberg, and they're, they're at two ends of the, the generational scale. And that's really what we're looking to, to replicate here um, by bringing adults and children together. And obviously, first and foremost, our creator, God, Christ, is at the centre of everything we do. So I wonder what this looks like for your messy church as it is now. What's the reality of your current messy church setup? Are you firmly wedded to your glue sticks and glitter? And perhaps you operate in a very urban area with very limited access to green space. What are the challenges to taking your messy church outdoors? Or perhaps you already get outside as much as possible. So what can we do um, at Messy Church to help you um, achieve that? And um, how can we help you be more wild? So I'm going to chat about some of the resources um, that are going to be available, some already available or are, will soon be available. So we're very keen that any new material we produce going forward um, is as environmentally friendly as possible. Um, we're hoping that there'll be a lot less single use plastic in there um, and making sure that if we are using recyclable materials, we don't do things to them that make them unrecyclable. Um, you may have already noticed um, that the existing Get Messy sessions that are in the magazine, we've been supplementing those with Messy Church Outdoors um, activities that you can access uh, through the website. Um, and we've also got um, some of you will have hopefully already had a look and seen that the new uh, Caring for the World We Live In um, Messy Church Goes Wild book is now out um, and this gives you the theology about why we should care about the planet uh, and plenty of ideas of how we as individuals as well as messy churches can make a difference um, it includes two full Messy Church outlines, but is packed throughout with some really simple ideas for you to try on your own at home or in your own Messy Churches. Um, the other big thing that um, we want to talk to you about is the Messy Adventures. Um, the team in Horn Church are one of 10 pilot churches that are field testing that material for us at the moment. Uh, well, just completed piloting those. Uh, messy Adventures are a set of 12 units of creative suggestions for ways to take your messy church outside. And they've all got a really strong scientific and environmental side to what you do outdoors. The units focus on lovely natural themes, water, wilderness, animals, mini beasts, change, rocks, trees and many, many more. And there are different, the material will look really different to the uh, traditional get messy format of uh, welcome activities and celebration all the core components are still there but there's lots of different ways for you to approach so there's an on the move which are suggestions for you to take your messy church on a trail around your neighborhood 
urban or rural um, and ideas there are ideas for what you do if you're going to go somewhere else um, uh, away from your church and do some activities in in a single spot or even in your church car park at a pinch and there are activities that can be done on your church site and outside if you've got some access to some outside space um, it's not prescriptive there's no um, way you must do it this way or must do it that way you might want to pick and choose from each of the different approaches against each of the subjects um, to, to see what what fits um, best in your context um, materials have been put together by our fantastic team of writers um, with input from Dr Dave Gregory's um, circle of Christian scientist friends um, so the as I said the um, the adventures are currently currently being piloted by 10 churches in both urban and rural locations. And we're just gathering all the final bits of feedback to put those into a final edit. Um, just thought we'd share with you some of the highlights um, of the feedback that we're getting from those pilot churches. So somebody said there's a lot, there's a lot of material in the units. And we know that when people first see it, because of the very different format, it looks a little bit overwhelming. Uh, and one church said that they've managed to get three whole sessions out of one of the units of material. Don't be daunted by how much is in there. There's not a requirement to do it all. Um, and we hope that um, it, it'll look, but with the introduction that we have to it, it'll really carefully guide you about how you can use the material best for your context. Um, one of the other um, trial uh, pilot churches said that they had 36 people come to their very first message, Church Goes Wild, and two thirds of those people had never been to anything else they'd ever put on as a church. Um, and so there's certainly evidence that being outdoors um, appeals to a really different group of people. Um, and we do know, you know, traditional message churches are places of welcome and hospitality, but we do know there is something about crossing the threshold into a church. So perhaps being outdoors makes that a little bit, breaks down that barrier even further um, such that people feel um, able to come in, come and join in. One of the churches that's piloting the material um, hasn't turned their existing messy church into a messy church goes wild. Their existing messy church is continuing, but they have created an entirely new worshipping community um, through their messy church goes wild and it looks like they will continue with with that post the pilot um, we're not saying that everybody has to suddenly build a new team and put a new a new worshiping community in, but it, it it may just provide um your existing messy church might not have got back up and running um post pandemic and this may be a way for you to uh, just a new format for, that might give you the impetus to restart there's been lots of feedback as well that the material does give um, opportunity for genuine intergenerational discussion. Um, as we've said before, um, young people are genuinely interested in environmental issues um, and how they can care for creation and make a difference going forward. Um, and some of the leaders have fed back to us how they've seen a real flipping of the student-teacher relationship where the children are teaching their parents and other adults that, that are present um, about what's being covered in the session um, and they're making the link to the science that they, they learn in school. So that's really, really encouraging. Um, as I said, there's lots of material in the adventures, um, and the, but the feedback is that um, the teams are using far fewer um, activities than they perhaps would in a regular messy church session. So we typically have sort of eight to nine activities. And in some cases, they're sort of only getting through about three to four. Um, and the feedback is that everything takes a little bit longer outdoors. I guess there's the propensity for somebody to run off and climb a tree and be distracted from, from what they're doing. But really one of the core aims of this project as well is to um, enable people to really sense awe and wonder outside in the natural world and if that time is stretched and they they take the extra time to look at the the world around them then then we really are um hitting the mark which is great 
Um, the other really positive thing is there's evidence that this is attracting new people to come and serve on messy church teams. Um, there was uh, one church that said they'd got um, a science teacher in their congregation that wouldn't naturally have been drawn to um, more traditional forms of messy church. Um, and there was um, somebody had a forest school teacher who's not particularly interested in, in craft, but obviously has a heart for, for doing things outdoors. And they sort of, when they found the church were doing messy church, goes, well, they said, oh, I'd, I'd love to get involved. Um, and there's opportunities, you know, as we've said before, young people are really passionate about this. So it's another opportunity for drawing young leaders onto your team as well, if it's a subject that, um, that interests them. Um, so we know that teams are a really big issue, particularly post-pandemic, maybe getting people back, um, back together. So maybe this is an opportunity to just refresh your team and maybe draw um, some new people to come onto it. So as I said, we're, we're currently editing um, in all the final feedback um, from the pilots, and we're aiming to have um, those units published on the website, um, hopefully late July, early August is what we're hoping for. Um, they will be on the website and they will be completely free to download. Um, we're then we're also going to be taking um, the Messy Adventures on the road um, with road shows. Some of you may have attended a Messy Church Does Science Roadshow um, some years ago. So we're going to be doing that. We've got two this year and there'll be two in the spring next year. So in terms of dates, if you um, are in these particular areas, you'll want to sketch these down. So the first one will be in Hornchurch in Essex, which are the guys that were featured in the video. They're happily hosting us for a roadshow as well. And that will be on Saturday, the 30th of July. Um, the bookings are just being set up for those. So keep an eye out on the events page. Um, and that ho they'll hopefully be um, live later this week or early next. We'll let you know through Facebook as well when they are. And then the second one will be in the Gloucester Diocese on Saturday, the 17th of September. Um, we're actually working with Gloucester Diocese. Um, Dr. Kate Williams um, is their environmental engagement officer, and she's working alongside us to help us with the material. And we've got six pilot churches in Gloucester, so they're hosting us on Saturday, the 17th of September. And again, the bookings should be available for that, um, in, open for that early in July. Um, obviously, this is us telling you about it. It would, um, you heard a little bit from one of the pilot churches in the video, um, but uh, there'll be an opportunity for you guys to join us again on Facebook um, next month on Wednesday, the 20th of July, uh, when we're hoping to have uh, members of two different pilot churches with us to chat about um, their experience and for you to hear firsthand from them what it's like as message church leaders to, to use some new materials. So we're hoping to have some from Gloucester on the morning and then the Horn Church team will be with us uh, on the Wednesday evening. So do please make a note of that date as well. Um, we're also looking to sort of gather some folk together from those pilots to create uh, a new support team. You'll be familiar with our support team structure that are on hand to give you any help if you need it. Um, and so we'll create a new Messy Church Goes Wild support team. So as you start to get to grips with the material and, and take your Messy Church outside, there'll be some, some experts on hand to give you some advice if you've got questions. So... What will you do with the information that we've shared with you this morning? I wonder what excites you about what you've heard um, and what opportunities does Messy Church Go Wild offer your Messy Church? I know that can all feel, it's probably a lot of information that's come out this morning and it sounds like we're wanting you to, to do an awful lot. Um, obviously, as a team, we're fresh out of conference where our keynote speaker, Dr. Paula Gooder, um, spoke to us. Um, our theme overall was about making a difference um, and illustrated through a fairly gory Old Testament story in 2 Samuel 21, we heard the story of Rizpah. And she used this story to talk about um, the one thing that we can do, the one thing we're called to do, um, the one thing that we can do to make a difference. We know that it's a really challenging time for people, uh, a lot of people in Messy Church getting back up and running um, after um, after the pandemic, and we're not saying you've got to suddenly 
spin your messy church into a messy church goes wild or you've got to create a plant a new worshipping community what is the one thing that you can take away from what you've heard this morning what can you take back to your messy church from what you've heard this morning perhaps it's just a commitment to ditch the plastic and try and reduce your waste and thinking about the food and all that as well about making the food in your messy church more sustainable as well Perhaps you'll just share the video with your team just to get them enthused about the subject and maybe think about it being something you might want to offer, maybe even just as a one-off over the summer holidays or in half terms. If you're not doing a messy church at the moment, whether you've done one in the past or perhaps you're here um, because you're thinking of starting a messy church, this might be um, a vehicle for you to get started. Um, So you might want to share the video with your team leadership at your church or your church congregation to get them excited about a new way of doing something different. How can your messy church make a difference to our planet? I'm about up for time and I'm at the end of what I wanted to share with you. So I just want to say a huge thank you um, for being with us this morning. Um, The video will remain up on the page if you want to point anybody to to it today, if you think they'd like to hear what we've said and I'll be back again at eight o'clock this evening um, but in the meantime I hope you all have a great day um, remember to get outside in the sunshine if you're able to have a brilliant day god bless everybody